We saw in Chapter 3 that as we use up long-term assets, we need to recognize that loss in value as an expense, called depreciation expense, on the income statement. A major part of Chapter 9 is going through the different methods for making this happen. Now, there are three primary depreciation methods that we can use. First off, there's the straight line method, which allocates the same amount of depreciation expense each year. There's the declining balance method, which is a modification of the straight line principle that recognizes that assets commonly use more of their value in early years compared to later years. There's the unit of activity measure, which involves calculating depreciation expense on actual usage. Now, these different methods require that we compute some basic information. First off, we need to know the purchase price. We need to know the useful life, which is how long we expect the asset to last. We need to know the salvage value, which is a guess of what the asset will be worth at the end of the useful life. And sometimes we need to know an estimated number of units that the asset will produce, basically trying to get a, a measure of how much you expect to get out of the asset. Now in this example, Flanders went out and bought some equipment, and he needs to figure out how much to depreciate each year given the different methods available. Now the cost principle says that cost includes all expenditures necessary to acquire an asset and make it ready for its intended use. This includes the purchase price, sales tax, shipping charges, installation fees, etc. Be careful for things that aren't explicitly necessary though, like an insurance policy to cover the asset which isn't included. In our example, we spent $96,000 on the asset, $3,000 on the installation, and $1,000 for shipping. So our total cost is 96 plus 3 plus 1 for a total of $100,000. Now let's move on to the different depreciation methods available. And let's start with straight line. Straight line depreciation is calculated based on the following formula where we take the purchase price less the salvage value and divide that by our useful life. In this case our total purchase price cost is $100,000, our salvage value is $10,000, and our estimated useful life is six years. So we're going to end up depreciating a total of $90,000 over the life of this asset, which is six years long. And so what this means is that we're going to have depreciation expense of $15,000 per year under the straight line method. Now we can move on to the double declining balance method. And the double declining balance method requires that we first calculate what we call a straight line percentage. And we're going to take that percentage and double it. And so the straight line percentage is equal to 100 divided by the useful life. And in this case, the useful life is 6. So our straight line percentage is 100 divided by 6, or 16.67. Now because this is double declining balance, we're actually going to double that rate. So we're going to multiply 16.67 times 2, and we get a double declining balance rate of 33.33%. Now, your depreciation in any given year is going to be the current book value of the asset. Remember that book value is your original cost, less what you have depreciated so far, times this double declining balance rate. And I think that the easiest way to keep track of things is to set up a table with five columns as follows. You want to have a column for the beginning book value at the beginning of the year, the declining balance rate, your current period depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation to date, and your book value at the end of the year. So let's start filling in the table. So we started off with the asset being worth $100,000, and we know that our declining balance rate is 33.33%. And that actually is going to stay constant throughout all six years of our useful life. So what we do is we take our beginning book value and multiply it times our declining balance rate. And that gives us depreciation expense for the year. And we can take all the depreciation that has been booked to date and put that in our accumulated depreciation column. And we subtract that from our beginning uh, book value to get an ending book value of 66, 667 after year one. 
Now continuing on, we've basically finished year one with our example using the double decline and balance method. Uh, and what we do is we take our ending book value at the end of year one and assume that that's the beginning book value for year two. So we can take our ending book value and carry that forward to year two. Now we take this beginning book value at the beginning of year two, multiply it times our declining balance rate, and we see that depreciation expense in year two is $22,220. We add the depreciation expense in year two to the running total of accumulated depreciation, and we see that now we have total accumulated depreciation of 55,553, meaning that our ending book value at the end of year two is 44,447. We can take this ending book value at the end of year two and make that our beginning book value at the beginning of year three. We then take this beginning book value and multiply it times our declining balance rate, and we get depreciation expense for year three of 14,814. We add that to our running total of accumulated depreciation, and now we have total accumulated depreciation of 70,367, meaning that our ending book value at the end of year three is 29,633. We can take this ending book value at the end of year three and make that our beginning book value uh, for year four. We take that beginning book value, multiply it times our declining balance rate, and get a calculation of 9,877 as our depreciation expense for year four. We once again add that to our accumulated depreciation to date and have a running total now of 80,244. Our ending book value in this case is then 19,756, which once again we carry forward to have a beginning book value at the beginning of year five of 19,756, multiplied by our declining balance rate for a depreciation expense in year five of 6,000. 585, and a total accumulated depreciation of 86,829, making our ending book value 13,171. Now one thing to be very careful about, especially under declining balance, is that you can't depreciate an asset below its salvage value. So oftentimes we have to be ready to plug in depreciation expense in the last year if our calculated depreciation expense would have things go below salvage value. And so what you end up having to do is recognizing that at the end of year six, we need to have accumulated depreciation of $90,000 so that our ending book value is $10,000 because we can't go below that because that's our salvage value. And so if we have a beginning book value at the beginning of year six of 13171 then we know that the maximum amount that we can depreciate is 3,171. And so this isn't what we would actually calculate under the declining balance method, but it ends up being a plug because we can't go below salvage value. Okay, so now we can move on to the units of activity method. And the units of activity method requires us to measure useful life in terms of output rather than years so that we can calculate an estimated depreciation per unit. And so in our example, uh, we can make this calculation by taking the same cost minus salvage value that we had before of $100,000 minus $10,000 for our salvage value. But now we made an estimate that our equipment will be able to produce 20,000 pairs of scissors. So that's going to be our estimated activity. So we're going to divide this by 20,000, meaning that we're going to take a total of 90,000 and divide by 20,000 so that we're going to assess depreciation at the rate of $4.5 per unit of actual output. And so we're going to end up stopping this file here and pick up with our calculation under the units of activity method in the next file.